couple of billion now, I think. You and your family and everybody else in this country is paying for this catastrophe that's happening up north. That's right. And I'll tell you why we have to take care of this site forever. The biggest concern is arsenic, especially arsenic trioxide. One of, if not the most, toxic forms of arsenic. A single teaspoon will kill a person. And there's 237,000 tons of underground. They did the math before and it could kill the world like 10 or 11 times over. Pretty much everyone is affected by it. It's almost like salt or flour. Water naturally drips steadily. So we have to pump this water out, treat it at the water treatment plant, and then we discharge as we have to ensure that the water never touches the arsenic. And then it's a catastrophe after that. At C1, it, this is the single greatest risk on site of Giant. Literally just like an open bowl with a creek running next to it. If the creek were to ever overflow, it would fill up the underground and all the arsenic would get saturated. We'd all be doomed. That arsenic dust would start washing away. But then it would start leaching tremendously. If the site were to ever be forgotten, and if water were ever to fill up the mine and it get into Great Slate Lake, it would drain into the Mackenzie, which makes its way into Alberta, and then it could go up the Decho, up into the Arctic Ocean. Even the cleanup that they're doing right now, it's just a temporary fix because they're just freezing it, preventing it from being mobilized. And frost is not intact. The miners have taken out the soil and all that kind of stuff and they dug and dug and dug. You need that overburden because that's your insulation. It affected the chambers from continuing to stay frozen and so that's the reason why they have to freeze it now. It doesn't just go away. The tailings are exposed and so the wind can take the dust and you'll find arsenic 25 kilometers away. The trees, the soil and the plants and the vegetation there was rabbits that they sampled, and a lot of them had calcification on their bones. Something's not right, and they're being contaminated. Winter time, when it won't come this way, going to snow, the kick is snow, got sick and died. Even a dog, hand, or pus, and stuff like that, gonna shoot him. My dad used to sit his mitts on the two islands here, and that's how he feed his dogs, right? We were getting fish right between Dilo and the giant line, and slowly the dogs started dying. And he noticed the fish weren't the same. When you clean the fish, they see something. Right? They know the difference, you know, like they know. But who do they talk to? They just have to talk among themselves. They know that that smoke land somewhere, right? All the way down to the lake, he saw ptarmigan. We're gonna pluck it and start cooking it, but when he lifted up the feathers, it looked smoothly. It didn't look great. So I just prayed over it and then I put it in the compost. But they've always said that it was safe, so everybody continued to swim, feed their dogs and things like that, how people died. They still say it's safe, but it's not safe. Once it's disturbed, the soil and everything, it's all... You said you were always swimming there? Mm -hmm. Where? In that, like, you know where the um, um, ends right there? Mm -hmm. That's where they um, go. They're putting their heads underwater and just, like, playing around. Do you guys not to put your head under the water, though? I could go. And then after they get better, I get sick. Very first time we got our arsenic testing was really high in their toenails. And that's, they were always outside. Every single day they were playing outside. And then we got called and she said, it's probably because you guys are eating too much fish. And I said, no, it can be, because my kids don't like fish. Like a year later, I think, because we were living uptown by this point, we redid the testing and the arsenic levels for the kids all went down. And that's because they're not playing outside down here every day. Why when the doctors and the scientists had concerns all the way back in the late 1940s, things didn't really move until 1967, 1970. There was concern with the miners. They knew, the health officials, the government officials knew what was happening. Even before the death of the child, there was amongst residents yelling concern. So you worked at Con Mine? Oh yeah, 19 years. I was a trackman, I was a blaster, cage standard, I was a hoistman, and the conditions of my health and everything else, it was all due to the thing in mind, in the dampness and everything else, my bones, and my age is 63. It was in the water, leaching through the rock, 
And if you work the old side, a lot of my friends are gone because of the exposure we had to all kinds of stuff down there. They wouldn't admit to it, but that's exactly what was, you know, the arsenic. That's why there's a lot of uh, animals coming to town now because they've got nothing for them to eat. They can't talk. We can see how they are surviving and what they are they're eating. Is it safe for them to eat here? Maybe I go to my cabin. I never see no bear, nothing. I never see no rabbit, nothing. You see be lost. He used to take snow from the back of the warehouse where there's no dogs around or this fresh snow just landed just to make tea. When they pour it in a cup, it's like oil, glossy. didn't taste the same. They have a warehouse. You used to be lost uh, raspberries. Nothing now, nothing growing. This is a woman. They wash the hair with the snow, they melt it, they said the hair all fell off. But then hearing some elders tell stories about how that area used to be really, really beautiful. Mom, when she was little, and Grandma, they used to just go right across here and go berry picking. Our generation never got to experience none of that. Yeah, look at it and it's just, it's just dead. There's nothing growing there anymore. We need to be protecting the lands and cleaning it up. So you saw it on three separate occasions? Yeah. Blue sap. Blue sap. Never seen blue sap before. And who's going to help us? Maybe it can cure cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the cure. So Khan turned their arsenic into sludge? I don't know much about Khan. I know. <laughs> That's the untold story.